Hi everybody, I'm going to start today with lots of diary dates for you I'm afraid. Don't worry, they are going to be on the Academy calendar, so if you want to check on there. Just quickly saying that next week, a reminder, Boggle Hole uh, parents, if your child is attending that visit, we've got a meeting for you after school on Monday at 3.30. Inset day on the 26th of May, so this next Friday, don't send your children in unless you've got them booked in for flyers. There's also an inset on the first Monday back, which is the 5th. Um, if you do want the flyers placed, just contact the Academy next week and we do have spaces. We've also got Forest Club, which is running in the holidays. If you've not booked and you'd like to, you still have time. That's Mon uh, Tuesday the 30th and Wednesday the 31st. Look on the website for their details. On the 19th of June, which is a Monday, we're going to do our non-uniform bottle and box. So for parents who don't know what this is, we invite you to send in um, either a box of chocolates or a bottle of shampoo, anything that we could use as part of our raffle prizes towards supporting our summer fair, dates of which will come up in a moment. The actual trip to Boggle Hall takes place on Wednesday the 21st till the Friday the 23rd. We have a transition day for our year six pupils who are attending Outwood Grange. That's going to be on Wednesday the 28th of June. Because the majority of our year sixes will be out of the building, we use that day to move all our children up to their next year's class. Gives them an opportunity to get to know the routines, their new teacher, meet the new friends that they're going to be with for next year. So between now and then, we will have meetings with parents and send out information to let you know who is going to be your child's teacher and what the class dynamic will look like. The summer fair is going to be a bit early this year. We're going to have it on the 30th of June, which is a Friday. Um, we usually do it in the afternoon, it's about 2.30. It's a great, it's a great afternoon, so if you get the chance to come along, please do and support us by sending in any items that will help us raise some more funds. We've then got our sports days coming up. So they are the week beginning the 3rd of July. So what happens with sports day is we hold them on a morning. Parents are allowed to come and watch. If for any chance it rains, we try to reschedule to the afternoon. If it's still raining in the afternoon, then unfortunately the sports day is cancelled. We can't reschedule further. So letting you know then that on the Monday, that will be for classes five and six, for years five and six. On the Tuesday, this is the 4th of July, will be for children who are in years three and four. On Wednesday the 5th, it'll be any child who's in key stage one. And our Thursday is for early years. Now we do a morning and we do an afternoon session for that one, just because of the amount of children we have. Further information will come out to you, don't worry. We're going to send the annual reports out on Friday the 7th of July. So if for any chance you've not received them on that Friday, if they're not in your child's uh, school bag, please uh, ask us on the Monday because they should have gone out. We then start with our year six performances. It's getting to that time already. Um, on the Tuesday 11th of July, we'll have the first year six performance, which will be at 6 p.m. And then the second performance will be on Wednesday the 12th. It will be allocated through tickets and unfortunately it is only for the parents and families of year six uh, pupils. We've then got the Nest Fest. I made the appeal last week for any parents who want to be part of our Nest Fest this year. It is going to be on the 14th of July. We will start the Nest Fest at four o'clock and we will be looking to uh, give you some more information as we get closer to that. We're not going to do tickets this year because it was a bit hectic. So what we'll do is, I think we charged £3 a ticket last year for um, adults and children. If you want to stay and watch the performances, please bring something to sit on, um, a rug, chairs, whatever. Enjoy the music and we'll come round and, and collect donations from you at that point rather than doing tickets. We then on to our final week. So 17th of July will be Key Stage 2 commendations. That's when we invite in any parents whose children have been nominated for an award. So you'll just have to be um, watching the post and see if you get anything through. And the 18th, which is a Tuesday, that's for Key Stage 1 and early years children. 
On the 20th of July, the Thursday of that final week, early years are having a beach day. We can't take them to the seaside, so the seaside is coming here. And we'll be having our Year 6 Leavers event at 6 o'clock on that evening. Bouncy castle, barbecues, that kind of thing. And then finally, the, uh, the last day, the Friday the 21st, we'll be having our Leavers Assembly, which is where all the Year 6 parents can come in and say their farewells to Rook's Nest Academy and the time that your children have spent with us. Now, the other day I was out on the playground and I think some parents thought that we'd lost a child. No, we absolutely hadn't because that's not what we do at Rook's Nest. But whilst I was out there, um, I was unfortunately approached by a child who told me that one of my children had just been knocked down by a cat. So any parents who saw me pelting down <laughs> Rook's Nest Road towards Ouchthorpe Lane, holding my trousers up with one hand, didn't look particularly glamorous, but that's what I was going to attend. One of our children had been hit by a car, and I had no idea at that point how serious it was. We're very lucky. Um, the child got back up, and other than quite a lot of bruising, was okay. So we have had an assembly in school with the older children to discuss how they should safely cross the road. This is not made easy for them because there are way too many cars that still are parked in places they shouldn't be, blocking the visibility of our children and other motorists on the road. My heart was in my throat when I was running down that hill, not because I'm unfit, but because I've had the unfortunate position of being a uh, teacher in my 20s and the first person at a road traffic incident that was involving one of my students. Now let me tell you, I've never forgotten that day. The parents of that child will never forget that day. The driver of the vehicle will never forget that day. And his family, his brother, he'll not forget it either. And there are still songs that I had to listen to at that child's funeral that take me straight back to that event. If you have ever had the misfortune to be in that situation, then you understand what I'm saying. I don't want to be there again. I don't want to experience that again. And we could have done the other day. I am telling the children to stop, look, listen and think. I need you as parents to think about where you are parking your car. Whatever profession you're in, however professional a status you think you have, however many children you have, however many errands you need to run once you've picked your children up or dropped your children off, and having a blue badge, none of those things allow you to park illegally. You still have to follow the highway code. And we are putting, you are putting your child's and other children's lives at risk. We are going out now and we are actively asking parents to move their cars. And on the whole, parents are doing it. We shouldn't have to be asking you. You should know not to park where you're parking because it's dangerous. So I need you to do the think. Is your car causing a hazard to people trying to cross that road? Is your car causing a hazard to people driving up and down Rook's Nest Road? We've got complaints again about the residence car parking area. That is not the parents. Please do not park there. It's not fair. The other day, we couldn't get our bins emptied because a parent told the bin man, no, they weren't gonna move their car. Mr. Milful was told by a white BMW driver that no, they wouldn't move from in front of school. Just to let you know, your registration number has gone to the police and if they haven't been already, hopefully they'll pay you a call at some point. This is serious now. We need to take heed of what we're doing. I know it's a difficult road, but you all chose to attend this school. So please, park away and let's get our children into school safety. Sorry I had to end this one on a downer. However, it could have been far worse. 
Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye.